Thank you so much for your attendance and your support of our ministry. We hope tonight will make a lasting impact on your lives and the lives of our own worship. If you would please stand, we'll sing the national anthem and follow by the Pledge of Allegiance. Feel free to enjoy that anytime. And right now we'll have Russ Ponder. He's 
the pastor at First Baptist Church in Farwell, and he will lead us in prayer, and then we'll start with these front tables to the serve ones. We evaluate for me. Father, I thank you so much for this night, for everything that it represents. Father, I thank you for the hard work that the ladies have put into organizing this ministry, bringing everyone together tonight to kick this ministry off. Father, we thank you for the heart that you have given them, the passion that you have given them. Father, I pray that you would give every single one of us an increasing compassion for your creation. May it never grow dull. May we never grow callous in fighting for the life. Father, you have given us life. We are at our best when we imitate you. So God, help us stay focused in the fight to give life to others. Father, I lift up to you right to you as she comes here in a moment to speak to us. You've given her an incredible heart and passion and knowledge for this ministry. God, I pray that you give her the freedom to speak everything that you have laid on her heart to share to us tonight. Father, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to live life to its fullest. It is your son's precious and holy name, my prayer. Amen.
prenatal classes, counseling. You know, if they feel like they can't raise this child, we will provide them the resources for adoption because we know how many families in this area have been able to welcome foster kids or adopted kids into their family into their home and made such a difference in their lives and their own lives. So we want to provide them uh, them with those resources also. Um, it's just I, I could talk forever, and I told myself five minutes, but you know, um, sorry. <laughs> So another thing that we would like to do is offer post-abortive counseling because after these women make these decisions, they sometimes make it based on lines, based on feeling like they're not good enough. And they make this decision to have an abortion and then they are just, it's almost like it, it taints, it poisons the rest of their life. For decades, they may make continual bad relationship decisions feel like they're not good enough to better their circumstances. And so what we want to do is be able to help them through that. Help them forgive themselves, realize God's redeeming love, and set them on the path. You know, teach them about financial planning and, and how to love themselves. The main thing is to help men and women see their worth through high size, see their unborn child's worth, and realize that they deserve better for the baby, they deserve better for themselves, and we want to equip them and how to do that, providing the resources to do that. So that is what we're trying to do. So any, you know, later tonight we'll have an opportunity to give. Um, please know we are an approved 501c3, so any contribution you make is fully tax deductible. And those donations will go towards a building, because right now we don't have a building. We are working on that. Um, but they will go to ultrasound machine training for our board and for our future staff at this center. You know, we hope that tonight to, you know, assess our budget, be able to soon open, uh, soon hire a director for this center. Um, right now we are a working board and we're happy to do it, but if, eventually we will have a director in place that will run the day-to-day -day operations. And that way we can have set hours and someone always there for uh, these men and women to come, in addition to things like option line, where they can call out a one after number, but there's always support 24-7 is what we're hoping to achieve. So that's, that is what we're doing. So um, if any of y'all have questions, we will be happy to, to answer those if y'all want to stick around and ask us questions. But what I would like to do is introduce our speaker, Ms. Sherry Wright. She is uh, I have to be careful because I'm emotional here, but she has been such a friend and a mentor to us. She has vast experience in, in this pro-life movement, and we are very fortunate to um, have her involvement, have her support. Um, she has sat down with us back, I mean, it's been a while, probably two years ago, a year and a half ago, when we said, this is what we want to do. And she said, okay, if you're serious, then this is how you get busy. You know, you, um, the God, the God loves the pro-life movement. That's what she's told me so many times. Satan hates it. God loves it. And, and we can see that because you look around. This is just a blessing. Absolute blessing for our first banquet. I am just thrilled. So um, I'm going to read you her biography, and then I will turn it over to Sherry. So Sherry Wright graduated from Texas Tech with a degree in marriage and family studies with a minor in child development. She and her husband, Billy, raised their daughters, Annie Williams, who's also on our board, and uh, Becca Heidelberg in Billy's hometown of Cisco, Texas, on the Oak Cross Ranch. She became a part-time teacher at Cisco College and very involved in civic organizations. Sherry's heart has always been to serve and help families. She has been active in the pro-life movement for many years. Sherry was the founding president of the board of directors of the local pregnancy and family resource center, and she continues to serve on that. She served one term, uh, one term excuse me, on the board of CareNet and is currently serving her second term on the board of Heartbeat International. Just a little tidbit right there. We are an affiliate uh, of Heartbeat International, so we are very, very proud of that. Her compassion for, prayer, uh, for families has led her to fight for mothers and fathers to make a choice for life. Her love for children and their parents has compelled her to see the need to walk with these families long after the birth of their child and help them with resources to enable them to meet their needs. Sherry will be sharing her thoughts on how pregnancy resource centers are an effective mission field to advance the kingdom of God. So if y'all will, welcome Sherry Wright. Thank you, Jill. 
and thank you for asking me to share the like-minded people, the blessing of life, and the joy of being involved in the pregnancy center. So much of what Jill said, I'm going to kind of report a repeat, so stay with me. But I want to start with um, a story about how the Lord led me to be so passionate about life. In 1973, I was at Tech working on my degree in marriage and family. And Roe versus Wade passed. And my professors were so angry about this. But the media only or mostly spoke about how it was a woman's choice. But those of you who were not around had no idea how this battle began. It was strong. And this is not just a political battle. This is not just a financial battle. America is at war. It is a spiritual battle. With the technology we have today, we know very well that the heart beats very early in a pregnancy. But Hosea 4.6 says, My people perish from lack of knowledge. Sixty million babies have perished in America. America alone, because we had a lack of knowledge. The 70s were considered the me generation, and I was very much a part of that. I was getting, finishing my degree, getting married, having babies. I was totally wrapped up in my own life. Until the day I came home with my newborn baby, Annie. I opened a, a letter. I actually had letters back then, not just emails. <laughs> I opened a letter from one of my good friends from Texas Tech. I was holding my newborn, and in that letter, she explained that she had had an abortion in New Mexico. She said, I was too afraid. I knew I couldn't raise this baby alone, and the father wasn't around. My heart broke for her. And I looked at Annie and thought, you have missed out on so much love. And I knew in my heart that she would never be the same. By the early 1980s, I became very ill. And I laid in the hospital bed with a very grim prognosis. I wanted to live. I had so much to live for. And I wanted to be well. So much so that I turned on the TV to look for a TV evangelist to give me some hope, give me some encouragement. But what I heard instead was a preacher yelling in a rage about abortion. Well, I wasn't used to that kind of preaching, so I turned it off. But I, I, I opened my Bible, but I could not forget what he was saying. And I finally looked up to heaven and I prayed out loud. I said, Lord, I know what that preacher thinks about abortion. And I certainly know what Gloria Steinem and the National Organization of Women think about abortion. But Lord, I don't know what you think about abortion. I have never heard it discussed in church, in scripture. I have not sought it. I opened... I mean, my Bible was open, and I looked down, and there were four columns. But my eyes fell on Psalms 94, 5 through 10. Listen to the Word of God. They crush thy people, O Lord. They afflict thy heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger, and they murder the orphans. I looked up at the Lord, and I said, Who would, who would murder an orphan? Who would kill an orphan? But remember, I just asked him, I had just asked him what he thought about abortion. And that still, small voice answered me. In my heart, I knew. He said, 
The babies being aborted are fatherless. They're orphans. Oh no, Lord, you're right. That is so true. But I went on reading. They say the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob pays no heed. Verse 4. Take heed, you senseless ones among the nations. He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who planted the eye, does he not see? He who crushes nations, will he not punish? I knew right then that the TV preacher was right. Our nation would be punished. Our nation would be punished for killing the fatherless children. I prayed right then, out loud again, Lord, I will do anything, anything to help stop abortion in America. And I never forgot that vow. I received my healing, and I began to look for ways to serve the Lord in the pro-life movement. I had little opportunities along the way, but I received a phone call several decades later, and it was from a friend who had been attending a prayer group in Cisco, and she asked me to be a part of it. The prayer team had been seeking the Lord on how to make Cisco a more Christ-like city. From that meeting and many, many, many more prayers, our pregnancy center, the open door, was birthed. The most consistently effective method of reaching a mother and a father of an unplanned pregnancy with choosing life is through a pregnancy center. Women facing an unexpected pregnancy who are not Christians will most likely never walk into a church. And women who have a church home rarely turn to their church at this time because they are walking in such great fear. Fear of judgment, fear of rejection, even self-condemnation. The main function of a pregnancy resource center is to rescue the mother from that fear and desperation so that she will choose life with preparing a parenting plan for her baby, either preparing to parent the child herself or to make plans for an adoption. Until you are personally involved in one of these situations, you have no idea how much pressure there is for a mother to abort her baby. When abortion became legal, it released a spirit of fear over America, a spirit of deception, and a spirit of death over our nation. Young mothers and fathers are attacked with that spirit so strongly that many times committed Christians walk through the doors of an abortion clinic in a state of confusion and fear. But when a mother receives the love and sound guidance at a pregnancy center, that fear is overcome with peace. Perfect love casts down fear. That is why being involved in a pregnancy center is so wonderful. You sincerely feel the love of those called to this movement. Look at the incredible people the Lord has called to create it with purpose. I knew the moment Annie introduced me to Jill Morris, she was called. She was also pregnant. <laughs> and she patiently waited on the Lord for his timing which is so wise, Jill. I have to give it to you. I'm, I'm not always as patient as you have been, but it is so perfect to wait on his timing. Although he calls and equips people with hearts for life, we never want to take credit for what only the Holy Spirit can do. But the centers are staffed by committed believers 
who want the Holy Spirit to flow through them to deliver these women from fear and to set them free with the truth. To even get a mother in the door of a pregnancy center takes the leading of our Heavenly Father. Our goal is for each client to feel His love the moment they walk in the door. They may not know where this love comes from, but they do feel it. Pregnancy centers empower women and families because there is nothing more empowering than overcoming fear. Be not dismayed at the generous provision of the Lord. After our first banquet in 2007, a family in Cisco offered to build us a building. We opened the doors in August 2008. Now listen to the progression that, you know, a, a trained board will write a one-year vision and a five-year vision. And everything we have done in two years has been on our five-year vision. But the Lord is in a bigger hurry than we are. So in 2010, we were able to provide ultrasounds. We actually opened our doors doing pregnancy tests and earn while you learn classes before we had an ultrasound. But Jill's right. I believe that creating the purpose will open with an ultrasound and being medical. So, the interesting thing about pregnancy centers is that it brings people across boundaries together. I mean, if you can bring Eastland and Cisco together, it is a miracle. I don't know if y'all follow football. I don't very well, but they're big rivals. And I, I, one of the Eastland fathers challenged one of the Cisco fathers that if he gave so much for an ultrasound, will you? And we raised forty-five thousand dollars for an ultrasound and enough money for our budget and enough money to hire a nurse. Amazing! Only the Lord could have done that. So in 2012, two years later. We felt led to open a second center. It's called a satellite center in Breckenridge, Texas, which is 30 miles away. We rented a building, and the first client that walked in the door was looking for an abortion. What this mother wanted, pregnancy centers do not provide. But what she found in our center is what she needed. After counseling and prayer, she chose adoption for her baby. In 2014, we were able to build a building in Breckenridge, Texas. That seems impossible again. But the money came from first Breckenridge, then Houston, then Dallas, then Cisco, then Abilene, then Breckenridge, then Eastland, and ended with a donation from Cisco. And these were large donations, fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. But the fruit of their gifts was so much greater. We were able to raise four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to buy the land and build a beautiful building and remain debt free. Let me assure you, none of us involved in the open door had any idea the Lord would do this. But we were so blessed by His provision. And yet, His provision didn't end there. In 2016, right like a week before our banquet, we received a call. And a foundation wanted us to receive a mobile unit. Now, that is a really big commitment. We prayed and sought the Lord, and we were like, gosh, it's, it's going to, we're going to have to raise enough money for a whole other center on wheels to staff it and everything. Then we get the call from the foundation that says, well, we feel like we ought to pay for the first year. <laughs> that makes it easy. But you know, we still were still seeking God because we were like, what, what if we can't fund it more than one year? And it takes two years for 
were that far a center to really get known in the area. As I was having a conversation with the board president, I said, oh, Lance, just a minute. Oh, the foundation's calling. And so I, I said, I'll call you back. And the foundation called and said, we would like to fund it for two years. <laughs> God is so good. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It's just amazing. So, be not dismayed. I am sharing stories about the Open Door Centers to give you a glimpse of how much the Lord loves the pro-life movement. But there are 2,400 heartbeat international pregnancy and family life centers. And 18,000 of them are in America. Created with Purpose is affiliated with Heartbeat International. And the staff and volunteers will receive excellent training from this organization. Heartbeat International provides biblically based teaching on issues that our clients face. These trainings are provided through webinars and conferences. And as any successful ministry, Heartbeat International depends on prayer. We have one day a month where we fast and pray. I mentioned that the open door was birthed from a prayer group. So please commit to praying for Created with Purpose. Pray for the protection of the board. Pray for the provision of the staff. Pray to hear the Lord if He calls you, whether you're a man or a woman, to volunteer. And above all, please pray for the clients that their needs will be met. A pregnancy center is kingdom work at its best. <clears throat> we have staff and board members from many different denominations. Yet the spirit of unity rules over these centers. It is so amazing to see the hands and feet of Christ at work in our community, letting go of things that cause division in the kingdom. Think about how many times we ask ourselves, what can I do to make this a better world? How can I reach those in need? A pregnancy resource center is a perfect local mission in which to serve others. You have the opportunity to preach Jesus with love and compassion. And as you discern when the clients are open to hearing, you can even use words. Any effective missionary will tell you they don't care what you know until they know that you care. We've all heard that, and it is so true in a pregnancy center. Having a desire to work or volunteer at a pregnancy center is a huge commitment. It takes hours of training and preparation before you're ready to see a client. Many times, it is not the mother who wants the abortion, but a family member. And there are several kinds of clients. The abortion vulnerable, the abortion minded, and the abortion determined. I personally think every woman is abortion vulnerable. Even a committed Christian who is pro-life, married to a pro-life husband, can be abortion vulnerable. When given the frightening news that her baby has markers for disabilities of some kind, fear, fear can enter their hearts. And then there are the abortion-minded, the ones who have bought the lies that have been spoken that the baby would be better off. Or, I'm really not capable of being a parent yet. Fortunately, centers have great success in helping these mothers choose life. The most difficult client is the abortion-determined mother. Thank you. I have the best son-in-laws.
the most difficult client is the abortion determined mother. When we get word that a client is abortion determined, the staff sends out a text and the board and prayer warriors hit our knees and we begin seeking the Lord and praying that this mother will be able to be reached and rescued from walking the path of heartache and destruction. This is why training for staff and volunteers is so important. One wrong word, one wrong look can cause another to make the wrong choice. But regardless of their choice, pregnancy centers will stand by their mothers. And they will still be a mother, whether the mother of a living child or the mother of a child that has died. We must never judge a woman who has had an abortion or a man who has been involved in one. It is legal. And they have enough demons to deal with without any judgment coming from us. Post-aborted women become very depressed and regretful, or they become hardened and self-righteous, or they seek the healing power of the Lord. Fortunately, we have seen pregnancy centers facilitate the healing of post-aborted mothers in beautiful and powerful ways. Some of the most influential leaders in the pro-life movement in America are poor post-abortive. They've either had an abortion, paid for an abortion, encouraged an abortion, but God has healed their hearts. You see, pregnancy resource centers do more than free pregnancy tests and free ultrasounds. If a mother chooses life for her child, we are there for that mother and that baby and the extended family. We provide classes, as Jill has shared, about parenting and marriage enrichment classes. We provide uh, Dave Ramsey, financial peace. We provide clubs where a mother has a place to go and, and share with other mothers. And we provide classes for fathers and clubs for fathers that actually teach them how to play with their children. Think about how many men you know that are grown adults who never had a father and they don't know how to relate to their child. And these classes help with that. When they go to these classes, they can earn boutique bucks and they can get things like cribs and high chairs and strollers, things that make parenting so much easier. Center boutiques are filled with slightly used or new items provided by the community. And the generosity that I have seen providing for these boutiques is always so much fun. Sunday school classes have baby showers to you know provide for the boutiques and the clients return things that they have purchased and that the children have either outgrown or don't need anymore. So our centers are full of provision. We also have GED and ESL classes because we have seen a need for that in our community. But we only provide classes that are not given anywhere else. If another church is doing it, or a government agency is doing it, we don't have time for that. We let them take over, take, continue doing whatever they're doing. But if there is a need that will make a family stronger, that will make a mother be able to communicate better, or get a job, then we try to meet those needs. One of the most beneficial things we do is bring amazing speakers to our schools. We reach eight high schools in our region with speakers who the students are totally touched by. Some of the speakers are funny and some of them move them to tears. But as we all know, hearing advice on making wise choices from someone 
besides your parents and besides the wonderful teachers, can inspire wise choices. In the spring, we do that in the fall, but in the spring, any teacher will tell you they do not have time for speakers. Um, so we have an event where we invite all the youth to come. Last spring, we went in the local theater to show the movie Unplanned. 400 area youth attended the movie for free. We want to reach our teens before they need us. And we find our schools are very grateful for our speakers. I want to urge you as founding sponsors of this ministry, and that is who you are tonight. If you are here, it's not by accident. The Lord has called you. But as founding sponsors for our Created with Purpose, you're called to be a prayer warrior. You're called to be a financial spot, uh, supporter. And you are called to share the knowledge about what Created with Purpose is called to do. But you must not lack knowledge. I urge you to watch the movie Unplanned. It reflects the evil and deception behind the abortion industry. Even those of us who have heard Abby Johnson speak and have read her book feel that this movie will have a strong, positive impact on the pro-life movement. I encourage you to ask your youth pastors to watch the movie and to show the movie to his youth groups. And those youth pastors will need to be prepared with scripture to answer the arguments that will come up. I want to close with this thought. Have you ever tried to explain an abortion to a child? When I was a child, my favorite toys were baby dolls. I dreamed of growing up and being a mother. But when I would go to Sunday school and hear the story of Pharaoh killing the Hebrew babies because he was afraid that they would rise up and take over his nation, he was afraid. Or when I heard the story of when Jesus was born, and King Herod ordered once again to kill all the Hebrew baby boys out of fear that the king of the Jews would overtake his kingdom. I was horrified. I would go home with my baby dolls and think, how did they do that? But I believed with my whole heart we would never do that as a nation. I believed with my whole heart we were way too well educated and sophisticated to ever allow the death of babies. But once again, fear has led to the death of our babies. Fear of rejection, fear of not getting our own way, fear of the cost of raising a baby. So many kinds of fear can cause an abortion. As I shared earlier, this is a spiritual battle. But for the first time since becoming involved in the pro-life movement, I believe we are going to win this battle. Every January in Washington, D.C., 500 to 600,000 people attend the March for Life. And you know what? The majority of them are high school and college age youth carrying signs that says abortion ends with my generation chanting as they walk down the mall of the Washington, D.C., chanting, abortion ends with my generation. These are our leaders of tomorrow. And if those of us from the generation of the 1970s cannot stop abortion, I truly believe the generation of tomorrow will. It is time we walk in faith as a nation and stop the spirit of fear and death from devastating our mothers and robbing us of our children. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Sherry, for sharing with us this evening. Um, at this time, we would like to take a moment to put into perspective the purpose and the importance of this ministry. Please listen closely as we hope that this um, sound bite that we're in place speaks to you like it spoke to us as um, the board of directors. What you're about to hear are the sounds of metal BB striking the side of the tin can. For every BB that strikes, it represents 10,000 lives lost in the wars of America's past. The American Revolution. The Civil War. World War I. World War II. The Korean conflict. The conflict in Vietnam. September 11th and the War on Terror. Since 1973, the War of the Unborn Child. Our hope in our next step is to have a facility. 
facility. Um, so as you are looking at your donation packets, the main thing that we do need, like Sherry said, um, more than we need your money, we need your prayers. We need, um, as a board, we want to make sure we're making the correct decisions in where our facility is located, in who we staff our facility with, um, you know, our equipment, our um, processes that are going on as we open our doors. We, as a board, want to make the right decisions that um, are what the Lord is guiding us to. So. If you cannot make a financial donation, that is perfectly fine. But please, please, please put Creative with a Purpose West Texas at the top of your prayer list. Okay, so, but if you would like to slip a check in an envelope, let's talk about that. So, we, um, on these envelopes, you have here, um, pretty self-explanatory, just fill out your information. Let us know if you want to use a check, we'll take a debit card, um, we'll take whatever. So you can give a gift tonight um, at, at whatever amount is uh, you know, feasible for you, whatever's laid on your card. And then you can make up to $1,000, $500, $250, $150. Um, and then just fill out all of that information, wrap it up and give it back to your table sponsor. Also, we um, have sponsorships. So, you know, if you're looking to make a bigger donation, a business wants to make a donation, these packets are at the front um, table over here. And you can read our mission statement is in that, I believe. Um, and then all the information you need about making those um, sponsorship donations. Um, so again, this, this uh, envelope is for your, I believe it's a monthly donation or just a one-time gift. Um, so those are kind of your options. We'll give you a minute if you kind of want to look over it and fill it out, you can give that back to your table host. And, um, but again, we do um, just appreciate all of you being here tonight. And so we'll give you a minute to kind of look over that. And then Steve is going to come up and pray us out of here. Or Dad. <laughs> and um, we'll give you a minute to, to look over some of that. give all in one more big round of applause. That's got me really down to do a benediction. I don't like that word. Those of you that know me in ministry know I'm weird. Because we're not putting an end to anything tonight. I'll sit right here and listen myself. This is the beginning of something in our area, in our community, that's essential. That's essential to the stability and longevity of our nation for generations to come. Our forefathers knew it, our founding fathers knew it, when they stated the Declaration of Independence, that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created and have been endowed by their Creator with these certain and inalienable rights of which are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Not anybody in this room will live long enough to know the effects of what just happened here tonight in West Texas. And yes, Sherry, God is very pleased with the pro-life movement. Very pleased. This is key for our nation. So I'm not going to close with the benediction. I'm going to do as the Bible says to do, that you declare these things, that they be established in heaven. That tonight we agree with God and He agree with us. That these things be carried out, that we put feet to our prayer. We've all been given an opportunity tonight to fight in a battle that we've watched from the TVs of our living rooms. 
We listened to on the radio and we talked about in the coffee shop. And tonight, we get to engage in the game. And it is a spiritual fight. So if it's okay with you, i got a few things I want to declare to the Lord that He and me and the rest of you will get established so it will be written down, carried out for generations to come. Is that okay with y'all? Even if it's not, I'm going to do it. It's kind of how I roll. But y'all just pray with me if you would. Just, just, just listen to the prayer. Tonight, Lord Jesus, we come and first of all, I want to give you thanks, Lord, for your grace and mercy. For Lord, there's not, per there's not a perfect group of people in none of this room. We all come with our own baggage and our own stuff, but by your grace, your mercy, and your unbelievable forgiveness, we're brought into the fold and we're brought to the front line of this battle. Tonight, Lord, I thank you for those that you have called who answered the call and took those first steps of faith. But now tonight we declare some things, Lord. This isn't just about writing checks and, and, and doing good for the moment. Tonight, Lord, I declare for created with a purpose, West Texas. I declare tonight, Lord, that your provision will be pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. That God, that you will know every need they have before they ever pray it or think it, and that your provision is set right before them, and that God, they simply walk in obedience, that you would bless them in everything they do. I pray tonight that Deuteronomy 28 prayer over uh, created with a purpose, West Texas. You said, if you will obey me, I will bless you and your herds, your flocks, your meat troughs, your vats, your fields, your, your, your crops, but most of all, in the fruit of your womb. And so tonight, Lord, I declare that over this ministry. And Lord, I begin to declare over this community that we would be awakened, that the body of Christ be awakened to the call for the saving of the unborn and the generations to come. Tonight, Lord, I declare for this United States of America that very soon the judicial branch will reach a place of stability and confidence to readdress a horrendous decision in 1973 and reverse that decision that this nation once again would rule according to the will and purpose of you, the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty. I declare that tonight. So send us out with purpose. Send us out with your anointing. Speak in our ears loud and clear that we would hear you and our feet would fall. As we enter into this battle, and it is a battle. Not against flesh and blood, but the forces of evil in the heavenly realm. And tonight, Lord, we establish these things in heaven and it shall be done. All to your glory, in your mighty name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again uh, for coming out tonight. We uh, really, like Jill said earlier, we're just so thrilled that this night is here. It's over with. And we're so thrilled y'all came out. So anyway, y'all, visit people. Be safe going home. Thanks again.